Hey everyone, welcome back to the next part, part three of Mistral AI agent exercise. So previously we created an agent on the Mistral AI console. We have a developer access, so we can make some API calls in this class object. We then build an app so that we can talk to it in this user interface. So that makes our life easier. And then we basically create a couple of helper functions so that we can take the output, isolate the Python code, and essentially write it locally. So for example, I run this function, it will create this hello world.py for me. So that's great. What's next? What's the next step here to build this fully functional agent? Well, we have a Python script. We then want to execute it. What do we do, right? We need a function. So. Again, let's go to the user interface that we just built. Now, obviously, we built this, so we're going to use it. I'm going to say, write a Python code for me to execute a locally existing Python script. And then I want to give a name, right? So we can invoke the correct script. So the name may look like this. Write this Python code for me. So as we're waiting, we are going to execute this code in the back end, and it will make an API call to Mistral AI. So this is the output. Let's examine the up a little bit. Uh, here we have execute Python script function. The input argument is a script path. And then we're going to try to use a subprocess package to execute the Python script. So I don't think there's anything wrong here. Nothing's glaringly wrong. So let's copy this and let's go to our collab. And let's put the code here. Let's see if we can make this work. So let's define a function. And that function is there. Now let's put the sample code here. We have a hello world too. And that's here. On top of that, we executed and then we want to print some sort of output. So let's see if this works. Boom, there you go. It printed the hello world. That's great. That's awesome. So that we know this helper function at least works. So next step, let's put everything together. Let's put everything together in a sense that uh, we can have some local solution such that we can talk to it. We can ask the system to give us uh, some sort of Python script. And we can run the Python script. And then once we finish, we can exit the program. So, so I'm going to try to do this by myself first to see if I can make this work. I need some sort of prompt, right? So I'm going to start with prompt. I'm going to say, enter your question here. So this is going to allow me to enter something in the console. Now, for example, I can run it and say, hello. And then the prompt will be hello, right? So very simple. So now I need a loop. I'm going to say, well, exit, not in prompt. Uh, we're going to continue, right? Otherwise, we're going to end it. So once this X is not in there, uh, let's continue the code. And so that's essentially what this thing is trying to do. Now, we have a prompt. Uh, the next thing is going to be some sort of API call. Uh, now, that's simple, right? We can just uh, grab this function. Let's put that in here. Make sure we have a correct indentation. And so that's the API call. Now, of course, this message is going to be prompt. So uh, I am going to overwrite the string here to prompt. So whatever this response is, it can be just a response. It can also be code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out first. Print, I'm going to say bot response, just so that I know this print statement is coming out of the chatbot. 
And then I want to make sure that if there's a Python code in here, I then going to trigger this function to save the Python script just like that. So and what I'm going to do is I am going to say if Python is in the response, I'm going to trigger this. And then I'm going to give a sample name. So I'm going to say sample script.py as just a random name. Of course, you can name it and whatever you want. As a matter of fact, I'm going to allow a name to be defined by the user. So if this uh, Python regex pattern is discovered or uh, it appeared in the response, I am going to say input what name do you want to save for this script. So I want to pass that to the user. And then whatever this is, I'm just going to call it file name. I think that's all set. Now I have this file name that is essentially a joined uh, string from whatever user entered. Now I'm going to put that in here as a functional string. I'll make sure end of the day is .py. So I think that's all good. Uh, this is able to basically isolate the Python code from this response and save it locally as a Python script uh, with the name that the user desire. So once that's done, I can then ask the user whether they want to execute it. So uh, inside of this if statement, uh, it's not done yet. Now we're going to say um, execution input, do you want to execute the script? Enter Y or N. Just to give a little bit of a guardrail, right? Um, so that I can design this a bit more easier. Uh, so if execution is Y, that means yes, I am going to execute this script, right? With the file name defined above as the user desire. And this output, I'm gonna print that out, just like what I did here in this line three, uh, when I'm making this function call. So I think I'm gonna go with that. And then in the end, obviously, uh, once this finishes, it will go back up here. It will make another API call. But I want this conversation to continue. So I don't really want to end it there. I'm going to ask the user to type out something else. So I'm going to say prompt, input, enter your question here. And then uh, in the end, I'm going to say something like a, a reminder. So note, uh, enter exit if you want to quit the program. So I want to make sure print output. And then let's give a name. Output of running Python script. And with that being said, let's try to run this code. So first of all, enter your question here. We're going to say, write a Python function to help me find the 10th Fibonacci number. And then to make, the, to make sure this is transparent, I am going to erase this Python script that I created earlier to make sure that there's nothing here that's pre-done. So I'm going to say enter. Now we're going to make an API call to Mistral AI agent, and it's going to write something for me with Python code inside. Uh, at least that's what it's supposed to do. So let's see if it's able to do that. Okay, so we said here that we have a Python script, right? That's what the bot told us. And then somewhere down here, we have a main script to execute it. We have an explanation, things like that. We have some sort of shell script. Now we know that this is actually within the response. We have not run the code yet, right? Because on the left hand side, uh, there's no Python script being saved here. Now, at least we don't have a new one. So what name do you want to save for this script? I say find Fibonacci number. I say enter. 
And then it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to execute the code? I say yes. And then boom, there you go. I'll put the running Python script. The 10th Fibonacci number is 34. And we can refresh left hand side. And as you see here, find Fibonacci number. We open that script as you can see. This is the Python function being generated here. And there's a main script down here that's running the actual function. So I can then continue, right? Enter your question here. Or I can exit. So if I say exit, then we'll finish the program. As you see here, this cell just finished running. So there you go. Hopefully, this is an interesting episode. Hopefully, this sheds some light of how do you essentially handcraft an AI agent using Mistral AI API call and to essentially get this agent to answer question for you, to create a Python script for you, and then execute the Python script for you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.